Awesome. There we go. Welcome. Welcome to fun ways to learn and use Seesaw towards our end of the year. Excited. Everybody is jumping in and going to see everything. We're going to just get started right away today and jump right in. Uh, welcome to our session, Fun Ways to Use Seesaw to End the Year. If we are joining a little bit late, that is okay. This is all going to be recorded for everybody to see, to watch, to go through at a future date. We're going to just be sharing a few things that you can do to end your year and also some tips and tricks about how to set up Seesaw either for summer or to make sure it's all set for closing up our year. We're gonna just jump right in here and share some awesome learning. So today we're gonna be sharing fun ways you can use Seesaw in your classroom during the last weeks of the school year. I will be joining you and leading you through some activities, some lessons, and some fun ideas to capture your year creatively and collaboratively using Seesaw. Before we jump in, we're just gonna do a few housekeeping items. If you have questions during the session that you'd like anybody to answer, click on the Q&A tab and ask them there. This will make sure that we don't miss them. We can always come back to them. There's something that uh, we can address before the webinar closes. If a question goes unanswered, we'll reach out to you and answer these after the webinar is finished. Other comments or ideas can be put into the chat so that any participant can view them or see saw it. on our end, we can answer them as they go. To open these tabs, look down in that bottom right corner. There's either going to be a blue icon or you're going to see the chat Q&A and handouts section over there. The last section, like I just said, was handouts. Uh, this is where you can have some key takeaways. We're going to be pushing some resources out to you to have. Uh, these will also be available on the landing page along with a session recording. Those will both be live and available about 24 to 48 hours after our session ends here today, uh, just to make sure everything gets uploaded and buffered. Don't uh, expect to see those within before, I guess, 24 hours to 48, just to make sure that we get everything up and going. I'm just going to jump right into introducing myself here as I'll be your Seesaw expert learning and teaching you through this amazing tool that we have available at our fingertips. Uh, my name is Chris Shiner. I am the curriculum manager here at Seesaw. And before that, I was a partnership manager and a developer of a lot of content. And even before that, I was a technology coach and a kindergarten teacher. So I have a long line of education following all of this up. Very excited to be sharing with you today about some fun ways to end your year using Seesaw. And so as we start to think about closing up our year, we want to make sure that we're keeping engagement high. We're making sure that our students are here with us. We're making sure that we are there with our students also uh, before we start to step into summer break and summer vacation. So when we think about how we're going to be breaking down all of our topics and all of our subjects and all this, there's a lot of options we can think about. You know, there's, there's a lot of different subjects and classifications you can start to put all of these different ideas into, but we started to organize them into three different words that all started with a C to make it nice, clean, and organized. So we talk about capturing our learning, creating learning, and celebrating our year. So we're going to use those as our three big launch categories and our three big parts that we'll talk through and then we'll address an additional bonus part, which is bonus part number four. Uh, and that's going to talk about ways to close up your year with Seesaw, some best practices that have to do with how you can archive things and make sure that families um, have everything closed up. And even start to prep and plan for next school year, even though we're jumping into summer. So this is a quote that I'll kind of lead everything off with. Um, Don't count the days, make the days count. This is one of my favorite quotes that's out there because it really speaks to embracing the time that you have with whoever you have it with. Uh, when we're specifically talking about closing up our school year, we only have a certain number of days left with students. And so it's about making those certain number of days count and really embracing that with them and enjoying every moment that you have with those students to make sure they get that maximum amount of love before you send them off to that next grade level and let them spread their wings and grow one year older as we say goodbye into summer. So as we think about all the ideas that you're going to see today, this is going to be core. This will be like paramount with everything that you see in this and that we really want to maximize the days that we have and really make them count 
and have the pieces we put onto Seesaw also reflect that as we build. Our very first part here we'll talk through is that first C word, which is capture. So we're going to be talking about capturing your year with the Seesaw and how you can actually facilitate that in your classroom. How each of these parts will go is I'm going to show you two specific explicit examples of how those can come to life. We'll go into Seesaw, actually look how those are kind of broken down, what they look like, how to make them. Um, and then we'll move on to the next part after that, after sharing a couple more quick ideas too on how those kind of unpack. So the two ideas we'll unpack here is snapshots of your year and the scavenger hunt. So let's jump into the very first capturing your year using the Seesaw tools. This is an example of what snapshots of your year could look like. Uh, really what this is, is a quick opportunity for students to capture a moment, capture a memory, capture a thing that's happening around them, and have that be something that goes into the journal. Uh, the difference maker with this one between other activities you might have seen is that there actually isn't a student template. There's just some prompts on the student example, and then the student template is just blank. It's wide open. So students have a very open canvas to actually be able to pull in their ideas, to be able to pull in their memories uh, so that you can capture those in Seesaw, and students own all of that. And I'll show you how that looks here in just a second. Um, some examples that we've seen this done from is like if you have a special handshake in your classroom, like if you and a student have this specific handshake you do every single morning, Seesaw is an awesome way to capture that and to have that be something that goes into the journal that can be kept forever and ever. Uh, along with the classroom song, that's another way too that some, some teachers personalize a song for your classroom. And so how are you capturing that in Seesaw and making sure that that is a memory that can be hung on to? Um, other ideas are just capturing selfies or capturing the smiles that are happening all around your school and or your classroom. How are we making sure that we're capturing those moments so that we can have those and hang on to those forever inside of Seesaw? What I'm going to do is switch tabs and just kind of show you how exactly this looks and feels inside of Seesaw itself. So this is our first activity right here. Um, before I actually click on this, you will get all of these activities in a handout at the very end. So don't feel like you have to recreate these as I'm building them. Um, I'm going to give these to you when we're all finished. You'll have all the templates. Uh, but what is important to make sure you're noticing is how I'm modifying this and how this is actually put together, because those skills are going to be able to transfer across anything that you're building inside of Seesaw, uh, whether it's something for the ending the school year or something for uh, a different type of subject you're working on. So I'm going to click on this and we'll actually edit the actual activity so you can see the back end and how these are actually broken down. So the first component that we try to make sure we have uh, is, is great directions. Having great directions really sets your students up for success. Once we have great directions, uh, we decided to actually build this in a really unique way. So if you remember how I talked about there is no student template for the students uh, to actually complete. This allows for some positive freedom for students. Like if they wanted to use the microphone, they can do that. If they want to use the camera, they can do that. If they just want to draw, they can do that. And they don't get pigeonholed into a certain tool. So the example section is where we prompted students with what they're going to complete. Students are going to see this in their activity feed. They see the three options that they can potentially build from. Uh, and that allows them to choose the tools that work for them to be able to submit their response in the journal itself. So if I wanted to modify this, if I wanted to change this on my end after I get this template, um, I have a very easy option of simply just changing out the text uh, and including different words. Let's say we wanted to say, instead of drawing your memory you made, let's say discuss a memory you made and have that icon instead be the microphone here instead of the marker. So I simply have to go select the text just like I have and say, discuss a memory you made this year. Include a period to make sure we got it all perfect. And then you just have to move it around, realign it, uh, and then get rid of this icon and put in a different icon. So if you wanted this one to be the microphone, we can simply click, drag, and drop that in. Or if we have it close by, we can upload that one uh, straight from Seesaw itself and it's built right in. 
One little tip with this is since we're not building this in a student template, it's actually okay that we don't lock everything because students actually don't ever have the ability to go in, touch these things, move them around or mess them up. Uh, we can just hit check. We don't have to worry about locking any of, any of these items and students still have the freedom then to go in and add a response and choose something that works for them in their specific capacity. So that was a quick little tutorial on setting up snapshots of your year and how you can quickly modify that to fit in your classroom to capture the memories that you want to have inside of Seesaw. Let me jump back here and we'll click on our next example. Example number two has to do with uh, how you are capturing favorite moments. And so this one has to do uh, with having some space for students to try to capture some, um, some of the things that they want, whether it's their favorite book, whether it's their favorite food, whether it's like the letter, the name of the day, but then allow that to have some different layers to it. So there's some additional things that you'll see as we start to unpack this uh, that's gonna allow for more to show up on the canvas than just a traditional like single picture or a single video, uh, it's gonna allow this to just really maximize what we're putting in Seesaw and have this be something that can just be this really, really powerful, awesome archive uh, that students are gonna love looking at, especially when we're thinking about students graduating high school, they can look back at this when they were in like third grade and reflect on some of the memories that they had that specific year. I'm gonna switch tabs again, and we're gonna jump into the scavenger hunt uh, just to kind of unpack this one for you. Before I jump in, you can see that this has eight different pages. What I've done is preloaded a lot of different ideas and examples for you. And I'll show you how you can make those all come to life here um, as we start to edit this activity and kind of look at what's under the hood in this activity itself. So just like we had with our first example, we want to write great directions. It's important that our students know what they're doing. They can see this quickly. They can jump into their uh, activity with positivity and with confidence based on what they're actually writing. Uh, and so it's important to write great directions that we have up above. If I click on student template, we can kind of unpack the different options that we have. And I'll just kind of talk to each of these before I show you how to replicate them or how to customize these for your audience. Uh, what we have here first, I'm gonna open this up a little bit so we're not covering up any of the tools, is my favorite book this year was, and then allowing students to answer that. So we have the ability for students to write using the tools, they can write using the marker, they can talk using the uh, microphone, and then they can snap a picture of the title of the book that they had. On top of all this, they can then answer, this was my favorite book because, so you're providing this prompt for them, the sentence starter that's really gonna give you this awesome, robust um, learning experience for your students that you're gonna be able to pull some nuggets you might not have actually known from students just by simply using a different format. So this first example is my favorite book. The second page is a replication of that, like my favorite book. If I wanted to have that show up multiple times, we can certainly make that happen. If I wanted to do that and have students pick two or three books, I can go over here to the three dots and duplicate this page. That way now I can ask them multiple times, what was your favorite book? Well, why don't we pick another favorite book? Maybe this one is a nonfiction book. Maybe your first book was a fiction book. Uh, it allows students to be able to really unpack their reading and think critically about what was their favorite parts of this and why would I choose that as my favorite book? If you wanted to uh, create that chain again, this, this is just five quick examples of the same thing. If we look at this and say, I don't want any of these, you can simply delete these pages and then you don't have those in the, in the feed for your students, okay? It's just as simple as adding or deleting the same thing as you go. Um, I'm gonna just get rid of those so there's only one book page for everybody to kind of see. And then I'll show you the other options here. The second one is letters of the day. So a lot of teachers do like a letter countdown where every single uh, day represents a specific letter. Uh, if today was like the letter C, you would allow students to have the freedom to, to kind of write and draw in here. Maybe they're going to do a letter C is a cat. Uh, and they have these awesome tools at their fingertips to be able to make these super cute, super fun creations. Oops, we're missing eyes. Uh, just like this, uh, all around the letter C. They can make a collage with a bunch of pictures. They can record things and words that they know start with the letter C. 
Um, but what's nice about this is that if I wanted to do this every day, I just have to duplicate this page and change the letter at the very top. Tomorrow is going to be D. The next day will be E, so on and so forth, as you start to duplicate and change out the letters as you go. The next example would be numbers of the day. This works the exact same way as letters of the day. Today's number is 28. Tomorrow's number would be 29, or if you were counting backwards, 27. Um, however you, you want to make that work, just like with the letter, students can use this the tools at their fingertips to be able to create things, to capture things that have to represent that number itself. So they have a ton of freedom in being able to do that. You as a teacher just have to provide that template to them, and they're all set to go. The next example is making a memory poem or an acronym for your name. So if you had, for example, your name on the left-hand side, just like this, this would be my name, Chris. Students have this uh, the ability to not only record this, but also to type, write it out. What is that letter, that thing, that part of you that represents the letter in that specific sentence? And then they can go and add another one for R, I like to run, or something like that that combines with each of those letters. So this is just another fun way to kind of provide students some freedom, some fun, uh, and some captures that are going to be super unique to their specific names. The final example here is sharing a year in one word. So this works very similarly to the page up above, except that you as the teacher can provide them a word. Let's say you wanted to celebrate the word um, morning. O-R-N-I-N-G, because your class was always ready to go in the morning. They loved morning time. They were like all pepped up with hot uh, with coffee and caffeine in the morning. So this was the your favorite time of the day for students. This would work the exact same way where students are just combining this. They're spelling out each of these letters uh, and they're working to fill out the rest of this poem in their specific classrooms. So that is uh, capturing all those snapshots. This is a way for students to be able to include all of their learning by just simply using the tools that we have at our fingertips within capturing. There are four other examples here for you that we don't have templates for, but they're just kind of for feeding some ideas. So we use the video and the camera tools to capture end of year moments. There are other ideas out here like capturing fun activities like field day. Uh, capturing end of year presentations such as oral reports or readers theater or simply just sharing some writing. Capturing awards or graduation ceremonies is such a powerful memory for families uh, that they're going to hang on to forever. I promise that one. And then capturing yearbook moments, things that are going to make you smile when you come back to that in a year or two years or five years. Uh, there are so many of those that happen towards the end of the year and making sure we use the tools to capture those is such an important time frame to be able to do that. So that is the end of part number one. We're going to jump into part number two here, which is a different C word. This one is creatively ending the year. So all the, the two ideas I guess you'll see here are really focused on creativity. How are we maximizing the canvas? How are we unlocking students' potential and really pushing their creativity to build something amazing all inside of Seesaw? The first example here we're talking about is my summer in a poem. So this is a way of setting up poetry in your classroom. Whether your students are ready for poetry or not, they can actually complete this activity. And I'll unpack what it really looks like and why I'm saying any, any student can really do it because they really can. Uh, this just allows students to have a prompt in front of them and them to create a story using the words that you have added to this. This can look a lot of different ways. The way that I chose to do it is talking about my summer in a poem. What do you want your summer to be like? What kind of things do you want to do? Uh, what do you want to play with? Who do you want to enjoy your time with? Uh, this can, again, be customized for anything that you want to. So let's go into this activity and unpack what this looks like. And I'll kind of talk quickly about how this can be used and the versatility within it. Great directions are written. Check. We're ready to go into the template here for our students. Um, just like I said, this is extremely customizable. So right now I added all of these words that have to do with my summer. What do I want to do? What sounds like fun? What are going to be the key things that are happening? So you see words like vacation, friends, pool, no homework, popsicles, summertime. Uh, and all students need to do is pull down these words just like this to be able to make their poems. So they could say summer is time. 
time. Where is time? I thought I wrote time. Um, summer is out of school. Let's see if we can write this one. And if we have one like this where it's like, uh oh, I don't have a word, students also have the freedom to quickly just change this out, out of school. Okay. Very, very simple like this. Uh, but if I was a first grade student, take that one for example, this is just a simple little sentence frame. All first grade students know how to build these words using some of these simple sight words like this and be able to put something together. But you also have this flexibility if you're a fifth grade student or a fourth grade student that there's a lot of robust words here that you can add to this and really make an awesome poem that has to do with what you're looking forward to in the summer or maybe what your favorite thing is uh, that you like to do or maybe it's even what do you want to do next year. Um, my favorite prompt for this one that I've probably ever seen is that a teacher used this exact idea, making a poem, but you had to give advice to next year's grade. So if you were a third grader going into fourth grade, you had to talk to that third grader and say, here's the advice I'd give you about this specific teacher or this specific grade level. So it's an awesome way to just capture some fun memories for students and really just open up that creativity box and allow them to explore, to play, and to work around within this. Just like the other templates, if you wanted to duplicate this, if you wanted to change out the words, uh, if you wanted to modify this in any way, shape, or form, you have the freedom to do that. We haven't locked anything down to the point that uh, you can't go in and really customize this for your specific classroom. Let's jump in to our next idea here. I'll switch screens, perfect. And this is probably my favorite idea out of all of the ideas that I'll share here today. Uh, this is having a puppet show. And puppet shows are an amazing way to use Seesaw. They're a super, super fun way to just hook students and to get them really thinking about how do they use Seesaw, but also like what kind of things can you really do and how can you really extend that classroom uh, beyond where you actually are into this digital realm. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna save this activity here quick so everybody has this one, and then I will go into what a puppet show really is. So let's check this one out. Puppet shows are the, probably again, like they're my most fun thing that you can kind of facilitate in learning, and I'll show you how this works. So students are gonna be prompted with a question right at the top, like what am I as a teacher going to do this summer? Or what are my favorite things that I'm gonna do? Or maybe it's even like, I, as a student, what do I want to do this summer? But all this hinges on is that there is a puppet for students to use, and there's a microphone for them to record with. So what I'm going to do is hit the microphone, let it count down three, two, one. And now anything that I say and anything that I do is going to be captured in a video. So I could act as if I was the teacher, like, hi, my name is Mr. Smith. And this summer, I'm going to be visiting the volcanoes of Hawaii. End of story. Okay, very, very short, very simple. But this now becomes a video that I can watch as a teacher and I can see what my students actually built and what they think I'm going to be doing in the summer. So the creativity within this is not only in this prompt, but it's also in what you provide them for a puppet. I'm going to show you quickly how to build a puppet uh, and how to bring something into Seesaw like this so that you can facilitate these really fun conversations. I'm going to jump over to two different websites, okay? The first website I'm going to go to is going to be a place where I can find a fun picture. Whoops, let me get rid of this guy. So one place that I choose to go to often is called Unsplash. Uh, this is a free place that you can go and find pictures that are beautiful, truly beautiful. And they're free. They're free for all teachers to use really in any way that they want to. Let's actually go and find like a shark or something fun like that. So I just type in shark. Uh, I, there are some ads at the very top. That's okay. There is all of our beautiful content down below here where we're going to actually grab something from. So let's take this shark here. This is a great shark that has, you know, most of it is shown here. There's some room around it. I'm just going to download this picture of our shark. You can see it's down here on my Chrome downloads. It also downloaded onto my desktop just so everybody knows where it goes. I just need to know that so I can pull it into my second website. The second website is called remove.bg. Now this is the a magical website that is out here for anybody to use that is gonna automatically remove all of the stuff in the background without us really doing anything. So what I'm gonna do is just grab that picture I just had and just drop it right on this canvas itself. 
And now it's going to do all of its magic. It's going to get rid of that background. It's going to just make it nice and beautiful like this and create a puppet for me in like literally three seconds. We found a shark. We have a puppet. We're ready to go. I'm going to download this now that it's done and all of the background got cleaned up. And we'll go back to Seesaw to actually set up our new puppet show. So before I drop this in, um, I can change the words. I can do whatever I want to, but I want to drop it in first so I don't accidentally forget where it is. I can, again, click, drag, and drop it in if I have it and know where it is, or I can upload this uh, from wherever it's located. Let's upload it right over here. Where's my PNG? Okay. I'll just do it this way. We'll just click drag and drop because that's very, very easy. And you can see that background is all gone. I have this awesome looking shark that's ready to go as a puppet. I just need to change my prompt for students so that they have something creative to kind of launch from. What will the shark do this summer with you? Something very, very open-ended that's really going to push students' creativity. Something like that. We'll just leave it wide open. So students can jump into this right where it is, just like this, and they can go in and start to draw their scenery, or they can draw the background, or they can draw somewhere that the shark is actually going to go. And when they're finished, they can click that mic, they can move around the shark, and they can record this awesome compilation uh, that you are going to get to hang on to, and parents and families are going to get to see forever and ever and ever. So that is the puppet show and this again the versatility of a puppet show is truly truly phenomenal there's really no ceiling on where this kind of an idea can really go and what subject it stops in so i'm excited to kind of see where some of these ideas take you as far as creatively ending the year with puppet shows so we recapped two ideas there are four more here for you uh, another idea is creating a welcome video for next year's classroom like we talked about that poem of welcoming or, or giving advice to last year's class how can we welcome next year's class into this room? Creating an interactive bulletin board filled with all your memories. Uh, there's a phenomenal way to share all of our Seesaw work, not only with families, but also have it be something that can be tangible, something that's you know a QR code you can scan. A great way to just invite your families in and have and host some memory sessions at the end of the year. Creating thank you cards in Seesaw that link to a QR code for that specific person. A phenomenal way, again, to just chain some of these things together and have some robustness around a thank you card. And then create vision boards for next year's teachers. Like if I was going in third grade from third grade to fourth grade, what do I want those fourth grade teachers to know about me? Or what do I want them to know about our class itself? It's just a great way to just set the stage and to have some enthusiasm about going into summer and going into the last year. We're going to jump into our part three here, which is about creating long lasting memories. Now, the two templates you'll see here, one of them is already all finished for us. I'm simply going to be walking you through it and what it really pertains to and all the amazing things that are in it. The second one is a send off to summer, which was my favorite way of sending off my kindergartners into summertime. Uh, and you'll get to kind of see what both of these really look like here as we unpack our two examples all about celebrating. This is one of my favorite things that we have available to you, which all of you get for free here today. So this is my awesome year. It is my awesome end of year specifically journal. Now my awesome year is a Seesaw Lessons collection, but this one specifically is a free one for you. You can use this however you want to. You can capture all your memories and you can really have this be something that is this all-encompassing package that all of the students put all of their thoughts and their beautiful captures of, of, their, of their work into one safe spot. So I'm going to click on this and walk you through it really, really quick. Um, what's nice about this is that this is kind of a culmination of some of the things we already saw. So this allows students to use the pen, they can use the microphone, they can use the camera to be able to fill out these specific pages. Now, I clicked on the preview so you don't see the tools. But if I assigned this, students would see the tools and they would see everything that they you can use to complete this work. So this is 12 pages of a beautiful My Awesome Year journal. Students have the ability to take a picture of their entire class. Maybe they simply go over to the bulletin board and they snap a picture of one that you have already. They have the ability to share a picture of you at the start of the year or them at the start of the year. And what do you look like now? How much did you grow? And what do you notice about that? 
These can also be drawings too, uh, things that maybe at the start of the year, I really liked pizza. And at the end of the year, I don't really like pizza so much. Um, three ways that I've changed and grown. Uh, this is phenomenal to see students put down things like, I learned how to read so much, or I really mastered my times tables in math. Um, my favorite things, my favorite food is this. My favorite movie is this, and I like it because of this. My favorite clothes I like to wear, great, great memories that you can hang on to. And this continues to go on. My word wall, um, my favorite books, what did I really like? What would I rate that also if I were to give this to somebody else? I am an artist. What did I draw this year? Or what did I make this year that I'm so, so proud of in art class? I am a writer. What was the best thing I wrote? And how can I capture that here inside of Seesaw? I'm a mathematician. What is one thing I learned this year? What am I super, super proud of in math class? I'm a friend. Share who my friends are. And maybe this is something that, you know, is something that you, you see captured throughout the entire year. And maybe it's going to change it. Maybe it's not. And that's okay if it does throughout the, the time that students have it. My goals for next year, phenomenal way to just kind of end up the year uh, as you go. So one thing with this that I'll say that is amazing is not only is this amazingly free and you can use it forever and ever and ever, but you can also complete this at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. So as we think about closing up this year, if you don't have time for putting this into play, that's okay. Hang on to it for next school year and start with it at the beginning of the year and then complete it again at the end of the year and see how different they are. See what changed within your students for that entire year and see how much they've really grown as they spent an entire 300 and well, not 365 days, but like 200 days with you. What has changed with them and how are they a little bit different? Let's jump back to go to our second idea here, uh, the send off to summer. Now, this is an entire activity literally built as an act, a seesaw activity. So this is everything from what a teacher would need from like supplies to how to facilitate building something to how to actually complete the activity all within one seesaw activity that you're going to see here and we'll unpack this. The send off to summer is a celebration that I would do every school year. It's a great way to just get your students to love ending the year and to, to just give them a little bit of a memory of like, yeah, I remember we did that. And that was one thing that really stuck with me this school year. So I'll show you what this looks like here inside of Seesaw. Again, this is entirely built to be independent for you. So you as a teacher just need to assign this. You can put it up on like your board or you can put it up, you can assign that to individual students if you want to but it walks you through everything that you need. So the send off to summer is done in three total steps. The first step is to actually get a piece of paper. You're gonna write on the front side of it, everything that you're proud of this year. What did you do this year that you're proud of? For my kindergarten students, they'd write things like, I learned how to read, I learned how to write. I learned my numbers up to 100. I learned how to make friends. I learned how to walk down the hallways. I learned how fun school is. Uh, the memories that really just um, make your heart melt as you think about these little five, six-year-olds going into the next grade level. And what happens after we finish the front page, everything you're proud of, you're going to flip it over and then students are going to write on the back everything that they're looking forward to. So as, again, kindergartners going into first grade, they write things like, I'm looking forward to going to the big kid playground or I'm looking forward to reading chapter books. I'm looking forward to riding the bus home with my brother next year. Whatever those memories really are, those are so personal and so touching for students that this was a way to celebrate that and to capture those moments inside of Seesaw. After you finished making the paper front and back, uh, we would fold it up in a paper airplane. Now, this is a tutorial of how you can fold a paper airplane. There's a lot of ways to do that. So if you want to change it out, if you want to have something different, you can always get rid of this video and put in a different one, or you can simply walk students through how to fold one on your own. The last thing we would always do is we would take a video of us all sending those off. So we would love to go to the playground and go to the very, very top slide, the biggest slide that we have, and we would throw those paper airplanes and just say goodbye kindergarten or whatever it really is, whatever phrase you want to capture. 
And that is just a great way to celebrate our year. It was the last thing we did before students went home for the last day on that school year. Uh, and it just allowed all those memories to just come and go and be so happy when we let them fly with the air. Um, we would obviously go pick them all up and keep them, send them home and, and have them be something that parents can hang on to for the rest of their year. So we weren't littering also, but uh, this is a great way to make this a digital memory too. It's not just a piece of paper you have at home that's folded up. You can watch all the students send it off and watch the enthusiasm on their face as they get excited about next school year. So that's the send off to summer. I'm going to save this one and make sure everybody has that too. And we'll jump into the last set of ideas before we go into our bonus section here. So other ways that you can celebrate are celebrating friends by interviewing a classmate about their year. What did you really like? What was your favorite thing? What do you wanna do next year? Celebrating unique years by creating a, in 2022, we did this. Uh, we all know there's been some unique years lately, and so this would be a fun way for students to really think about what was special about this year, what made it different, what kind of things am I going to potentially remember forever and ever and ever. Celebrating new learning, uh, that is so, so important, and it's something that is so prevalent, especially when we think about primary education. What was new for you this year? What was something that was, you know, potentially challenging for you? Where did you grow? How did you expand your learning? Um, and then the last one, celebrating all the joy you had. That expands across everything that you're doing. Um, what kind of things did you just really, did that really just fill your heart? Did it warm your heart as you completed it? And allowing students to share that too, just creates this beautiful memory for you to have forever and ever inside of Seesaw. Uh, like I promised at the very beginning, you will get all of these activities on your own. This is the example, and this is just a, a screenshot of what this PDF looks like. Uh, we will share this with you in the handout section here inside of the webinar itself. But all of these links go to those specific examples for you to take, for you to try, for you to have in your classroom. A uh, bonus at the very bottom of this is there is some additional lessons that are free for you to use until the end of the school year, and they're at the very bottom. So if you're getting close to that end of the school year, make sure you check those out so we don't miss out on some free lessons. If you want to learn more, you can always go to web.seesaw.me slash lessons to see more of what we have available here also. So let's jump in to our bonus part four. Now this has to do with how do we successfully set up Seesaw? There are some kind of administrative things in here, but there's also some things as a classroom teacher that I can kind of think about uh, and prime myself with as I think about going into summer. Uh, before I say all this, if you're a classroom teacher watching this, make sure that you're gonna take time for yourself this summer. Uh, it's really important to kind of slow down, get some rests, R&R, &R, uh, and really just take the time that you need to, to make sure that you're refreshed for next school year. If you're an administrator, that doesn't mean that you don't need that time too, uh, but this is also a really important time for administrators, especially Seesaw administrators, to think about the steps that they need to put in place uh, to close up the year the right way, especially using Seesaw as a platform. So the first thing that we have here uh, is talking about Clever and Class Link. There are just some things to think about as we unpack, like what should we really do with some of these steps? Uh, this video says it's unavailable. We're, you will get this also in a handout and it will be an available video. It's just kind of erroring out for you right now, just so everybody knows. But this walks you through how to restart your sync and how to actually uh, set up your Clever Class Link so that it's paused for the end of the school year. So we do recommend you do this uh, by June 30th, 2022. That just allows the year to close up and it allows everything to archive on a great day uh, that students aren't actually in class also. Uh, the CSV roster summer school program is also available and then restarting the sync in the fall allows those new students to come, the old students to go uh, and everything to kind of sync up as we think about Clever and ClassLink when, we, when those are those auto upload rosters. The second option here, and the one that I think is, is extremely important, is using Seesaw in the summer. So if you have summer school, uh, you have the ability to use Seesaw for that. We don't have to think about that as this different entity and it's going to mess everything up. Um, there is support to be able to make a lot of this work. You can contact district help at seesaw.me to be able to help you create a summer dashboard. Um, we've seen a lot of different names for what those really look and feel like, but it's a great phenomenal tool for you to set up and use for your summer school as you think about that. 
There are a couple links here. And again, with this PDF, you'll get all of these things as clickable links too, so that you can take those, you can try them out, you can see if they work for you um, as we think about the role that you're going to play within Seesaw for Summer. The last thing is thinking about back to school. And I know that we're closing up our year and it's like, well, we have to think about back to school right now. Uh, what do you really mean about that? And we just want to make sure that as teachers, as administrators, you know that there's going to be some good things coming for next school year. Uh, we have an update to messages. We have lessons that are coming and we continue to add those. There will be almost 200 new Seesaw lessons next year. And we have a new update coming for the app itself that's going to allow for just one place where everybody to go. It's going to be all synced. It's going to be all perfect and beautiful and allow that to just remove a lot of confusion uh, within our classroom. So be on the lookout for more information on these things coming. Uh, they're going to continue to roll out throughout the entire summer. And just make sure that you're prepared for those when it comes to the next school year. And you're prepared to just um, either share those if you're an administrator or a coach. Or as a teacher, you, you kind of know, oh, yeah, this is new and this is going to this is going to really help me improve my classroom experience because that's our core design with everything we do. How can we make teachers lives better? How can we make classrooms and education better? Uh, these are the updates we're putting into place to make sure that those things are happening. The final tip and trick here is to leverage the PD resources that are out there. So our YouTube channel, if you don't know where that one is, you can go to it, just search Seesaw on YouTube and you'll be able to get there. We highly recommend subscribing because we're always putting amazing things out there. You can see some examples here like Learn with the Experts or we have Deep Learning with MDL. These are all recorded webinars that we've put out there and are available for anybody for free. And so we've seen a lot of districts be very successful when they think about how do you map out your professional development? This can be something I do individually as a teacher. Maybe I want to plan out what professional development I want to do for Seesaw. It doesn't have to be these giant examples that you see here of year one, two, three. It can simply be what are the two videos I want to watch this summer? Or what are the three things that I want to accomplish next school year? Um, but if you are a coach or if you're an administrator, you can also be much more purposeful about planning that too and create these very in-depth plans that allow your teachers to just improve as they think about Seesaw learning in their classrooms. So this is just an idea that I wanted to pose out there. There is a ton of those resources again on the YouTube channel for our Seesaw, um, the Seesaw itself. There's also more trainings available if you want to dive into the Seesaw for Schools website. A lot of those are starting to fill up. So make sure if you're trying to plan out some professional development that you get those done relatively soon. So our goal for our entire webinar was to have fun with Seesaw in the last 30 days of school. I gave you tons and tons of ideas on how to make those things actually come to life. I showed you exactly how to build them. I showed you some tips and tricks on, on how those things can come to life, but also supported that with some additional ideas and resources. So I hope that fun is going to be the core word that comes out of what you're going to accomplish this year. If you do have questions, again, this entire presentation will be sent to you uh, in the email here within 24 to 48 hours. So you have the ability to click on those links to see what else you need to do to make sure that Seesaw is set up for the summer too. And we're always here to help. So please reach out to your rep, uh, reach out to somebody if you have questions also. We just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. Thank you for taking the time uh, to be able to be here with us and to share all in this amazing learning. I'm Chris Shiner, the curriculum manager here, and just wanted to personally say have a wonderful summer to you and enjoy the time you have with your students. So we just wanted to say thank you and we'll see you next time.